So I guess what you're saying is if I want a normal life, stay away from you and Peter Parker. Or maybe... Maybe... <laughs> what? Maybe if you only had one of us to deal with. Huh? Love is a tricky thing when you live part of your life behind a mask. And no one knows that better than Peter Parker. If there's anything to take away from the multitude of appearances that we have seen of the wall crawler in action, whether that be in comics, movies, games, or TV shows, is that the best possible stories that do feature that character is where the two separate worlds of both Peter Parker and Spider-Man collide. And in my opinion, there's no piece of media that does this better than Spider-Man the new animated series. Or better known by many as Spider-Man Tenace, where in an amazing turn of events, even though the show only lasted one season before it was cancelled, and has fallen a little bit into obscurity in comparison to the other Spider-Man shows like the 90s cartoon or Spectacular Spider-Man, the entirety of the series was recently added to Disney+, Plus, which will not only allow for the show to gain a bit of a resurgence among Spidey fans who may have not been able to see it previously, or may just want to dive back into the nostalgic greatness that is this series, but it surely is is gonna keep Sony happy so that way they can still keep some of that spider profit for themselves. You having a good time? Yes. This is me. This is how I win. Not to mention that Spectacular Spider-Man was also added to Disney Plus as well. And while I can't say enough great things about that show, I just wanted to take this time to dive back into the greatness that is Spider-Man to Nass, and personally highlight what I believe to be one of, if not the most beautifully tragic moments within the entirety of this show. Now, I have already talked about this show several times in the past, as well as providing a full in-depth review about the series as a whole. And one of the greatest aspects about this show is exactly how far Far, MTV, Mainframe, and Marvel were willing to go in order to fully portray Spider-Man in a much more darker and mature tone than what we're commonly used to. Hell, there's even a point during one of the episodes of the series where a guy flat out gets decapitated off screen. You shouldn't have sent your men to kill me. It was Raymond, not me. <laughs> He's such a hothead. At least he has a head. <laughs> And while there are various episodes that do portray this rather dark subject matter in a great way, the main one that I wanted to look at here actually pertains to the series two-part finale, Mind Games, where the primary premise of this episode does feature Spidey facing off against two originally created villains that were made specifically for this series of Roland and Roxanne Gaines, otherwise known as the Gaines Twins, who are pretty much if what happened if Professor X was an evil dickhead. Their main power relates to mind manipulation, and end up defeating defeating Spider-Man by putting him in a trance by the very beginning of the episode. But as for the rest of the episode, it's simply an illusion that's taking place within Peter's mind, which is actually something that the producer and director of the show ended up seeing as a massive creative liberty for some very impactful storytelling. There are the twins, Roxanne and yes. Roland Gaines. I, you know, I remember sitting in a story meeting and uh, we were on to a whole new area and I don't remember what it was, but in the middle of that I thought, you know what, we had abandoned the idea of a two-part season ender. In the middle of that, something happened. I said, you know what? This is a much more interesting story. Take the mind control thing from the tattoo thing and, and turn it into something totally different. And we came up with this two-parter that allowed uh, a whole episode to really take place in the mind of Spider-Man. As a matter of fact, while you're saying it, I'm watching this particular episode, and it is so fascinating that I wish you guys would shut up. We're gonna just <laughs> be concentrated. We're gonna have a moment of silence while Stanley <laughs> watches our episode of what could be better. So anyway, as we said earlier, you know, part of uh, early on, they said, well, let's have this season closer, use some of the resources from that we built up over the season. And my reaction was, no, I wanna make it bigger, bigger, bigger. We ended up getting both. It is a huge episode, but we, could do it in part by bringing back uh, some of these villains from other episodes. Um, the construct of this being 
in Spider-Man's head allowed us to do anything we wanted with the characters. Yeah, but it's yeah. designed in a way that the viewer watching this who doesn't know that will not get tipped off and think, well, this is a dream sequence. You know, you guys speak so beautifully and I'm fascinated by what you say, but I must say it's hard to concentrate <laughs> because I'm looking at the artwork and as I've said this so often, the animation is so superb. And these action scenes, they rival the live action Spider-Man movie. I mean, it, I am fascinated by the great animation in this show, you are in, too in this whole series. Now, throughout the entirety of Mind Games Part 1, there are a lot of signal cues that are given towards the audience to indicate that everything that is going on within Peter's life is not as what it seems. But the biggest of which is where Peter finally decides to go and do the unthinkable towards Mary Jane, which is hands down one of the best moments to be featured within this series, and is carried even further by the incredible chemistry that we do have between Neil Patrick Harris as Peter Parker and Lisa Loeb as MJ. Not just in this one episode, but within the entirety of the series itself. But what I love the most about Mind Games is how it does a great job of connecting to some of the other episodes within the series like Tight Squeeze, which featured Pterodax, as well as Law of the Jungle featuring Lizard. But the one that stands out the most, which directly connects to the moment where Peter unmasks himself towards MJ, is actually in regards to what people view as the worst episode of this series. And in this case, I am talking about head over heels. <laughs> you know what that is? Your new lab partner. You're about to enter the Christina zone. <laughs> know what I'm feeling right now? Yeah. Your invention sucks. Now this episode isn't nearly as memorable as the others featuring much more prominent characters within the series like Electro, Lizard, Kingpin, or even some of the newer characters like Turbojet or Pterodax. But if all else failed within this episode, the greatest thing that did manage to accomplish is creating an immensely intimate connection between Peter and MJ, which is pretty much directly carried over into mind games. Peter is continuously struggling to keep his day-to-day -day life as both Peter Parker and Spider-Man a secret from anyone that is close to him, which obviously includes Peter's closest confidants of Harry, Indy, and MJ. And all the while Peter is continuously facing Facing this dilemma throughout the entirety of the series, it really hits home here within Head Over Heels that truly showcases exactly how much MJ is willing to open up to Peter and attempt to grow closer to him more than ever before. But due to Peter keeping his biggest secret of him being Spider-Man close to the chest, it ends up creating some pretty phenomenal and hilarious relationship drama between the two of them. Like communicating. Oh, okay. I can do that. Can you? You're always running off somewhere, but I realized I have no idea what you do or where you go. I mean, who are you really? MJ, deep down inside me, I'm afraid there's a big, boring nothing. I don't know what else I can tell you, except for the coolest secret stuff about me, which I can never share with you. Like this. Do you want to tell me who you really are? I mean, if you want. I can't. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, at least I know which secret you're keeping. Uh, yeah. Oh, Peter. I'm sorry for forcing that game on you. You didn't force anything. It's just that there are some things I'm not ready to share. Not just with you, with anyone. I hope one day you'll let me in. But here within Mind Games, we finally get to see the fantasy that Peter has been dreaming of all this time. And no, that doesn't relate to Peter getting with both MJ and Indy at the same time, but rather he finally makes the decision to reveal his true self to the one he loves the most. Where, in classic Spider-Man fashion, it sadly ends up costing him everything. Oh my god. Peter, I... Uh... I mean, but... Spider-Man? It's time you knew. You trusted me enough to tell me the truth! Let her go. I'll do whatever you want. What I want... Uh, uh, is to see you uh, suffer. Uh, no! <clears throat> Mary Jane. Peter... I'm so... happy. This is a oh, wait a minute, guys. Mary Jane is not in good condition. Okay, either. now, we went back and forth with the script and MTV so many times for her last words because... She's dying. I, I originally wanted to say, Peter, I'm so 
happy, and then she dies. Mm. So her last word is happy because she's in his arms and knows that he shared the secret with her. And and I don't remember why they didn't like it, but we we had to change it. <laughs> well, well, it's kind of hard it's to survive. think of somebody being it happy. Survive? She knows she's Is that what she says? That's what she says. Yeah. In the end, everybody, Spider-Man the new animated series continues to hold an extremely special place in my heart, and still remains to this day to be my favorite animated interpretation of Spider-Man in a cartoon format. Whenever Spider-Man wins, Peter Parker loses. And whenever Peter Parker wins, Spider-Man loses. But in this case, Mainframe and MTV decided to make sure that that wasn't the case, and ends on a pretty depressing cliffhanger where both Peter Parker and Spider-Man lose. Where for Peter, he ends up losing the main relationships that he's built with both Mary Jane and a little bit with Harry Osborn, as well as the unfortunate outcome where Indy has been put in a coma. And for Spider-Man, the entire city is against him because they think that he intentionally pushed Indy off the roof of a building. which makes makes him public enemy number one within the eyes of all of New York City. It would have been an absolute dream come true to see exactly what Mainframe and MTV had in store when it came to the cancelled season 2 for Spider-Man Tenace. And with the previous statements that have been made by Mainframe themselves saying that they would love to make a season 2 if Marvel were to greenlight the project, it does give me a little bit of hope that Spider-Man Tenace will continue to live on in a great way within Disney Plus and hopefully to get a lot more people talking who end up watching this show show to finally understand exactly why Spider-Man the new animated series is such a beautiful tragedy, one that continues to live on all these years later, and still remains to be an absolutely sensational experience for any and all diehard Spidey fans. Is he gone for good? Has he heeded the cry for him to leave this city? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain, the people of New York overwhelmingly feel they will be better off without him. They're right, of course. Too bad no one told me that being a superhero is an impossible game to win. Is this how it ends? Where he gives up being Spider-Man? It's, yeah. it's about ten. He's like he's giving a he's voice, doing a voice over here. The people I've known and loved and let down. Oh, I think that's great. Who tried to give me so much, only to lose everything. So the series ends where Spider-Man decides that's it. I've had it. Yeah. I bet he's going to throw that suitcase in the water. Boy, that's a good guess. That's a good idea. Stan, you saw this before. <laughs> so it's time for me to say. Goodbye, Spider-Man. We have um, the moon on one side and the uh, sun on the other, setting up the dichotomy of the two personas, yeah. Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Yeah. yeah, look at this. We just want people to uh, come back to a second season. No, that wondering. is beautiful. That is so dramatic. What Slow a pull back. Great end. Sign, sign off for the true believers, Excelsior. Oh, come on. Hey, I tell you, that is so good, it calls for only one last remark. Excelsior, true believers.